Real Virginia is proudly produced by the Virginia Farm Bureau Federation. Since 1926, Farm Bureau has been working to preserve Virginia farms and our rural heritage. Visit our website at VAFB.com. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Real Virginia, a show about Virginia agriculture and the people who produce the wonderful local products we enjoy. Brought to you by the Virginia Farm Bureau. Virginia farmers are helping food banks supply fresh food during the pandemic. If your hostas are too crowded, Mark Viette has the cure. And Virginia peanut farmers are urging consumers to eat more peanuts. Welcome back to Real Virginia, everyone. We're coming to you this week from Parker Farms in Westmoreland County. Thousands of Virginians are visiting local food banks to stretch limited food dollars. Burke Moller reports many farmers are doing their part to help, but more are needed. Food banks across Virginia are seeing an increase in clients across the state due to the COVID-19 pandemic, but farmers are helping to meet that demand. Long lines at local food banks have become an unwelcome sign of the times this summer. Layoffs and furloughs mean more consumers are trying to stretch their food dollars. Farmers have their own problems caused by the coronavirus, but they're still trying to help. This year was a challenging year for growing. We had a late frost and it became extremely hot later on. So it bunched a lot of our separate plantings together. We were supposed to harvest wheat corn over a seven week period and it was condensed into a four week period. That made us not have enough labor to get everything done on time. So rather than pass all of it that we couldn't pick, uh, we were glad to have the Healthy Harvest Food Bank get some of their volunteers out and that way it didn't go to waste. Virginia food banks are grateful for any donated farm produce, especially with more people than ever coming to them for help feeding their families. We've seen about a 20 to 25% increase. Mark Kleinschmidt and Cindy Balderson run the Healthy Harvest Food Bank in Warsaw, Virginia. They've been working with Parker Farms in Colonial Beach for the past eight years. Based on experience, they're expecting a rough fall. Come September and October, it's going to spike. I think it's going to stay that way throughout the winter. So right now, you know, we've been trying to get all the food we can to allow for those difficult months that we're assuming are going to come up soon. One thing that helps Virginia farmers address this increased demand for fresh food is a state food bank donation tax credit. The Virginia Farm Bureau and other farm organizations supported the tax credit in the General Assembly in 2016. The program allows farmers to claim a credit up to 30 percent of the value of their food donations to a nonprofit food bank. The maximum individual tax credit allowed is $5,000 a year, and the statewide program is capped at a quarter of a million dollars worth of credits each fiscal year. We just hate to see anything go to waste when it can be used. Farmers like John Marker in Frederick County say they'd likely be donating extra produce with or without the tax credit. Still, every bit of help for the growers is welcome. He's been working with gleaning operations for decades to help get unsold produce to families in need. It's still a little early in the season for him, but Miller anticipates more activity and more donations as fall approaches. I haven't really had anything to glean yet. Uh, most of our early peaches have been very light because of the freeze damage early and uh, so uh, it, uh, we usually have some garden vegetables and things like that they can glean but then uh, the big thing is uh, apples later in the season. The Federation of Virginia Food Banks says with the pandemic one in eight Virginia families is experiencing hunger and the need for fresh food donations is greater than ever. Farmers hate seeing the product of their hard work go unused. There's a lot of food that goes to waste simply because it's not perfect or it's a slightly off grade. So it makes us feel good that somebody can utilize that. And for us, it's not a lot of work. The, the trick comes with getting the volunteers to come. So we're very fortunate to have a, a group that will coordinate that effort and uh, make good use of something that's perfectly, perfectly good and nutritious. 
The Federation of Virginia Food Banks distributes more than 120 million pounds of free food to almost a million Virginians each year. Farmers are proud to be part of that effort. In Fredericksburg, Virginia, I'm Burke Moeller reporting. Virginia is blessed with a statewide network of food banks that coordinate their efforts to collect donations and distribute food to households in need. Seven regional warehouse facilities collect government food supplies, along with corporate and individual donations, then distribute them to smaller feeding programs like senior centers, soup kitchens, and food pantries, as well as distributing to individuals in their respective communities. They've developed their own distribution and shipping networks, all to make those food donations stretch as far as possible. In addition to donations like fresh produce and canned goods, food banks also welcome financial contributions. I'm Mark Viette, coming up on In the Garden, I'm going to talk about how you can have lots of hosta in your garden. Stay with us. We are stronger together, especially at this difficult time. For over 90 years, we've watched our membership grow, and we're honored to be part of such a special community. Thank you to the farmers who provide for us every day. Virginia Farm Bureau is proud to serve our members, their families, and to give back to our local communities. That's the Farm Bureau way. Hostas are one of the hardiest shade plants. Mark Viette says they're also one of the easiest to divide in order to expand or share your plantings in the garden. Some of the smaller leaved hosta really produce a lot of stems and shoots. You can make lots out of this plant. This one's called Golden Nakiana. I'm going to treat this one a little differently. I'm going to dig part of this plant, one of the clumps, and I'm going to shake the soil off and then I'm going to divide it. So you just come in and dig just like this. And I've always got to make sure I fill the holes back. You know, my dad gets mad because I dig these things and I leave the holes and he trips in the holes. So fill back on the holes. So here I am going to shake the soil off. And usually I have a plastic bag so I can put it right in a plastic bag so the roots don't dry out. And I'm going to pull them apart. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten plants. Now, you can make them a little bigger. One, two, maybe three, if you don't want to wait a long time. You can put them in pots, or you can plant them right back in the garden. Now, I will tell you, by shaking off all the soil, I have removed all the root hairs. So, carefully, what I'm going to do is come in and trim them, cut them back like this. Now, if for some reason you have got a very old hosta that you really can't do anything with, you know, a razor's not going to work, a knife not, will not cut through it, but I love meat cleavers. You know, we used to use these little axes, but they would crush a lot of the plant because they're really wide, and you can see how narrow a meat cleaver is. So when you go to a yard sale, or if your grandmother or your parents have an old meat cleaver, save them. And you just wanna make sure that they're sharp, You can use it for a couple things. You can come in here, if it's a, a real established plant, 
Now this one I wouldn't need a meat cleaver. Don't hold the plant with your fingers in your hand, but you can come right in and easily cut your hosta. And you'll get used to this. Line them all up. And you can trim the foliage like these. Make lots of hosta. If I want, out of that, I probably could make 60 plants. But for our gardens, we probably want to start out with a little bit bigger plant and you can fill your shade gardens with hosta. I'm Mark Viet. Join me next time in the garden. For more garden tips, go to inthegardenradio.com. Coming up on Heart of the Home, we're going to deconstruct some eggplant. Stay with us. And now, a sneak peek into a day in the life of a Virginia dairy cow. They get their day started. They have some lunch. Get some exercise. Spend time with their friends. And then end their day with dairy sweet dreams. Real dairy, real life, real delicious. Tomatoes and cucumbers are easy, but many consumers don't know what to do with eggplant. Chef Tammy Brawley has the recipe for this garden treat in the heart of the home. Hi, I'm Chef Tammy Brawley of The Green Kitchen. We're doing a special outdoor shoot today at Old Tavern Farm in New Kent. I'm gonna show you guys how to work with some great summer vegetables. Um, Old Tavern's got some beautiful vegetables out here. We've got some um, graffiti eggplant that I'm gonna use. And I love this recipe because it doesn't have a lot of the uh, goopy sauce and stuff. It's delicious, but came up with this a few years ago. We're gonna take the eggplant and we're gonna cut slices. And what you want to do is you want to put them either on a grill pan or on your outdoor grill. Sure, my heat came on. You want to grill them until some nice grill marks pop up on the outsides of the eggplant. And you can also grill a tomato. Um, I wouldn't do the tomato as long as the um, eggplant, but a couple of slices to get a little warmth in there is great. We'll toss those on the grill right next to the eggplant. Now, once your nice grill slices, grill marks, excuse me, your grill marks have popped up on your eggplant, you can pull that off. You want to put these now on a pan that you're going to put in the oven. We're going to just melt some mozzarella cheese, but before the mozzarella cheese, we're going to get some fresh basil. Again, we're using fresh basil from out here at New Kent. Basil is one of my favorite herbs to work with. Place the basil right on the eggplant that you've grilled. And then we're going to pull the tomato slices off of the grill, put those on top of the eggplant and the basil. And now it's time for some delicious fresh mozzarella cheese. This is actually mozzarella cheese that has been um, done here in Virginia as well from Curds and Whey. Pull that out onto your cutting board couple slices. Put that right on top of the eggplant with the tomato and the basil. And now you want to pop it in a warm oven, roughly about 300, 350 degrees, just lightly till the, uh, till the cheese melts over the top. And then one of the things I love to add to this dish is grilled carrots. That was the first thing I learned to grill years ago. Um, carrots have a very natural sweetness, and I love cutting them in half and putting them with a little bit of olive oil, salt, and pepper. Pop them on the same grill pan, and then they come nice and soft, and it makes a nice little addition. So now you have a great summer dish that you've barely used the stove for, deconstructed eggplant. Join us next time on Heart of the Home. Recipes from the Heart of the Home can be found on the Virginia Farm Bureau website at VAFB.com, as well as on Chef Tammy Brawley's website, GreenKitchenRichmond.com. Eggplant is raised for commercial sale across 77 acres on 232 farms in Virginia. Those are the producers that sell to farmers markets, grocery stores, and distributors. Many more backyard gardeners also raise eggplant, which is a good source of vitamins and minerals as well as being rich in antioxidants. 
It's a popular staple in the so-called Mediterranean diet. Eggplant grows well in raised beds or containers. It's a warm season fruit, and their principal pest is the eggplant flea beetle. Some producers prefer smaller eggplant varieties because they're easier to manage and protect from pests. Peanuts and baseball go together like peas and carrots, but this year, half the partnership is missing. Ricky Gibson reports many Virginia peanut farmers are urging folks to eat more of their favorite baseball snacks. Baez comes set next to his ear, now delivers. The crack of a bat and the roar of the crowd are just some of the experiences baseball fans are missing this summer, as the pandemic has canceled all minor league baseball ball games and major league games are closed to the public. And that means tens of thousands of bags of Virginia-style peanuts are still in storage. Baseball and peanuts go hand in hand. There's some things in life that are synonymous with each other. Starsky and Hutch, Butch and Sundance, baseball and peanuts. When they wrote the song, Take Me Out to the Ball Game, they put peanuts in there for a reason. Uh, and I'm certain that just as it, uh, no games are affecting uh, the baseball industry, there's so many trickle effects to that, and peanuts is certainly one of them. The baseball season being canceled or delayed has greatly impacted the Virginia inshell peanut um, situation. The minor leagues ballparks consume a heck of a lot of peanuts, and there's absolutely no fans there. In major league, absolutely, is like 30,000 people a game in major leagues, and there's no baseball peanuts being displayed, uh, being eaten there, consumed there. Paul Rogers raises seed peanuts in Sussex County and serves on the National Peanut Board, a peanut trade group. He says the good news is growers have already been paid for the peanuts that are uneaten. They came from last year's crop. But peanuts are an important part of southeastern Virginia's farm economy, and a glut of peanuts on the market this fall is not a good sign, especially since this year's crop is looking good so far. We have been very blessed in the last decade with great peanut crops. Um, the weather has been very good to us and the breeding along in the peanut varieties has come a long ways from what it was decades ago. Um, this year's crop was started out slow. We got a wet late start because of wet cold weather and then we went through a very dry July. But in the last 10 to 12 days we have been blessed with adequate moisture and as you can see behind me these peanuts are um, well on the way to a potential for having a very good crop. Dale Cotton with the Virginia Peanut Growers Association notes that Virginia-style peanuts have a unique marketing niche. They're only raised in eight counties in southeastern Virginia and North Carolina, and are the only nuts sold in shell. All other peanut varieties are typically crushed for peanut butter or used in candies and processed foods. The lack of sales at the ballpark is significant, but Cotton says consumers and sports fans can still get their peanut fix. We're very fortunate in that at least uh, many of your uh, in-shell processors also deal with, with other markets of peanuts too. Uh, one of the major one also uh, makes peanut butter. So instead of putting peanuts in the baseball game, they may well choose to do it peanut butter, which peanut butter has gone through the roof since this pandemic has taken place. So, you know, you lose on the one hand, you gain on the other hand. Uh, but they are also supplying grocery stores just like they always have with plenty of in shell peanuts. So, and they're seeing uh, more move through the grocery stores than they have in the past. So it seems like to me what people are doing is instead of going to the baseball game and eating peanuts, they're instead possibly staying at home watching something, baseball or something on TV and buying their own in shell peanuts and eating them at home. So. All you got to do is go to the produce, uh, produce department of any grocery store and you can buy all you want. Roger says that's exactly what peanut farmers want to hear. Peanut growers have supported local baseball teams for years with special promotions at ball games. Those special events are gone for now, but both farmers and sports fans can still enjoy some Virginia peanuts. I love all sports, but baseball is special in its own individual way for every single person. And it's so much a family thing, like how many people were taught how to crack their peanuts at a ball game by their dad? How many people would have peanuts on the picnic table after having a catch with their dad? You know, how many, how many, how many people 
uh, have experienced things at a ballpark uh, because of family situations, a ton. And as much as football, basketball, NASCAR, other sports mean, if you, if you paint a family picture of experiences, a ballpark usually has way more to do with it than any other sport. And peanuts fits right into that. I mean, we're asking, the, you know, growers are just asking consumers to eat peanuts any way, any way, shape or form you can eat peanuts. Of course, Virginia peanuts, we are, like I said in, before, we are mostly in shell, but we do have a lot of Virginia peanuts that are going to gourmets um, and to your, your local peanut um, gourmet shops. Um, anything you can do to eat peanuts, eat peanuts, make peanuts, eat peanut re recipes, um, peanut butter cake, anything you can do to eat peanuts and to help us get through this pandemic to get the supply and demand back where it needs to be. Few people are more optimistic about the future than farmers. As the pandemic continues, both peanut growers and sports fans alike are hoping for better luck next year. But as it often said, that old saying, tough times don't last, tough people do. So we just have to remain tough and we have to be there for each other. So my word of positivity is out to those farmers, out to the salespeople, out to the vendors, out to the people who keep the peanuts on stock. Hang in there. We're gonna be filling this place up in 2021. I think the peanuts are never gonna taste so great. The beverages are never gonna be so cold. There are brighter days ahead, folks. And just wake up tomorrow hoping that we're one step closer to those brighter days. Some minor league ballparks are holding special event nights for socially distant parties, movies, and campouts this year, featuring all your favorite ballpark foods, including, of course, peanuts. In Sussex County, Virginia, I'm Ricky Gibson reporting. We're so glad you could join us this week to celebrate all the bounty Virginia has to offer. From the kitchen, to your home and garden, to our beautiful wide open spaces, we are proud to say that this is Real Virginia. For everyone from the Virginia Farm Bureau, thanks for watching. Make it a great week. We have 37 parks across the Commonwealth. Every year, 10 million visitors enjoy 600 miles of trails from beaches to mountains, hundreds of cabins and campsites, even yurts. We are Virginia State Parks. All right, give me a spot. You know my motto, safety first. They could be dangerous. I think we should call animal control. Animal control? <laughs> to be safe. Don't worry. Just... I got this. It's a new motto. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. There are 30,000 roadway accidents each year involving cars and farm machinery. Farmers will be moving equipment for planting and harvest season. The slow-moving vehicle triangle in red and fluorescent orange colors and flashing lights allow for quick identification. When you see an SMV sign on farm equipment, slow down, prepare for sudden stops and slow turns. Patients will save lives. Just remember we all need to share the road, we all need to be responsible, and we need to be guided by the law. Motor vehicle safety starts with you. Did you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires.